Aviation is a fast-growing source of emissions. It accounts for about 4% of all greenhouse gas emissions in the EU and a staggering 14% amongst transport emissions. It is only second to road transport. And it's set to only get worse. The International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, expect emissions from aviation sector to triple by 2050. Right now, only a small portion of emission are regulated for aviation in the EU. It's because the EU's carbon market has been on pause since 2012 and only regulating emissions from flights within Europe. What about flights to and from the rest of the world? Well, this so far has been left to Corsia, a global scheme set up by the UN agency ICAO that only covers emissions that are above a baseline, so growth in emissions. This barely scratches the surface of the problem. Not only it relies on cheap and often problematic offsets, credits, but it also doesn't really impose a fair price on pollution from the aviation sector. But will Corsia fail the test? Well, according to our analysis, it most certainly will. In our study, we study the revenues that the EU ETS extension could generate according to different scenarios in the coming years. We evaluate also the possible inclusion of non-CO2 aviation effects in the UETS, as well as carbon pricing the emissions of private jets with a multiplier. And we calculate the amount of revenue that this could generate. And how much money would this raise? Depending on how far the UETS is extended, this could raise up to 400 billion from commercial flights and up to more than 1,000 billion euros if non-CO2 aviation effects and private jets are fully included into the UHS over the period 2025 to 2040. And the need for the revenue is real. The EU needs to raise at least 12 billion of euros per year to finance e-kerosene, the only truly sustainable and scalable fuel for aviation. On top of that, it also needs to raise at least 47 billions of euros per year to finance our European railway system. And then in addition, the EU also needs to contribute to at least 79 billions of euros per year by 2035 as part of its contribution to international climate finance targets. Finally, expanding the EU ETS will make aviation better pay for its pollution, help finance a juster transition, and make the sector clean up its act. So now, Will the EU restart the clock or will it keep flying blind?